Yeah. Okay. Um, question three. It says particles called pi mesons. These details don't really matter. <laughs> are produced by accelerator beams. If these particles travel at okay this uh, speed and leave this many seconds. Oh, so here, uh, this many seconds when at rest relative to an observer. So this is the proper time tap. It's the lifetime of the pi meson, uh, must be the charge to pi meson um, when it's at rest. It asks how long they live as viewed in the laboratory. So in the reference frame where these mesons are moving with some speed v. This is the view in the lab frame. So I'm pretty sure the hint will basically tell you, oh, it's a time dilation question, I think. Uh, <laughs> reviews uh, for the discussion of time dilation. So yeah, it's a time dilation question. And I guess uh, at this point in the coverage of special relativity, let me just uh, work with uh, this quantity here, the uh, symbol of V and just, so the time dilation formula, the phrase that helps me, so it's a question of, so, you know, when you have these special relativity effect formulas, you have the quantity that you measure in lab, and you have the proper quantity, quantity that you measure in the, uh, in the rest frame of the object that you are looking at. And it's a question of the gamma factor, you know. Does the gamma factor go here? Or, as the case could be, does the gamma factor go here? Um, that, that's really the question, and by gamma factor, this is what I mean. Uh, this is the definition of the Lorentz factor, gamma. Uh, it's defined as 1 over square root of 1 minus v squared over c squared. So, um, so th there's a property of the gamma factor that helps you uh, get an intuitive feel for um, what it does. So that property is that gamma factor is always equal to or greater than 1. So whenever you are multiplying something with a gamma, you are making it larger. When you are dividing, you are making it smaller. And the phrase that helps me remember which side the gamma factor goes here is this phrase. Moving clocks are slow. And, you know, you can also look it up in the textbook, but I'm you know, trying to not have to look up the textbook. So when you get the sense that moving clocks are slow, then and this pion is a moving clock. So you can imagine this pion basically measuring down the amount of time tau. So when you see this decay, the amount of time it takes to decay, the time, lifetime in lab, it should be greater than tau. Because if this lives for one second, you are looking at it live actually longer than one second in the lab frame because it's, you know, it's one second running slow. So that means my gamma factor should be here. So that's it. I think that's all the formula. I can just plug in the numbers. Oh, let me do that in Sage Math. I have this out here. And uh, I can kind of, uh, I can just use this as a calculator. I actually brought this out for some other thing that I'm going to do later. But let me just use it as a calculator. So, um, um, let me declare some variables to help me just to write stuff down. Um, so my um, lab time would be gamma times tau. <laughs> That's the symbolic form. Now I need to plug in some numbers. Uh, this is a substitution syntax that's uh, really fun to use. My lifetime in the, uh, in the proper um, rest frame is 2.6 times 10 to the minus uh, minus eight second. And oh, gamma, I have to do a little more work. So my gamma would be, um, let me do it this way. I'm gonna just write out the expression. One divided by square root of one minus V, that's 2.67 times 10 to the power of eight, squared divided by C squared, which um, is three times 10 to the power of eight, um, meters per second um, squared. So yeah, that should be it.
Yeah, 5.7 uh, times 10 to the power of minus 8. Okay, yeah, so 5.70 uh, times 10 to the power of minus 8 seconds. So that's it, pretty simple. Um, that's, I, I haven't <laughs> done it before. Um,